Hey, everybody, Dr. It here, and we are live with March of the Living. So, uh, March of the Living is a little indie strategy game in the veins of FTL with zombies, pretty much. Uh, it was developed by Machine22, indie devs uh, published by Creepy Corpse LTD, and it was just released on the 20th. If you so choose, you can pick it up at $16.99 Canadian or whatever your equivalent would be in your region. So, like I said, it's like FTL and The Walking Dead procreated and made a weird... 8-bit styles strategy game. You'll be making decisions, helping people, trading, mapping out, uh, keeping track of your food intake, rest, party members, etc, etc. But we'll get into the nitty and gritty as we continue. So let's start a new game. Okay, uh, so you have the options to play as four characters. Uh, I mean, to unlock the other ones, let's just say, like Anna and whatnot, you have to actually get Greg to the docks. I haven't successfully beaten the game yet. Of course, same thing. For Derek, do something with Anna. For Blake, do something with Derek. Everyone has their own things. Like, in this case, Blake. A lot of rifle rounds. <laughs> like, this guy went crazy for this, like, World War for World War Z equivalent thing. So he's probably going to be one of your best ones out there. But for now, we're going to be sticking with Greg. He's uh, proficient in pistols. He's pretty good at shooting them. Pretty alright at everything else. Flashlight, hammer, and a kind of an old dingy revolver. His shtick is, he might not be the luckiest man, but when his mind is made up, there's no dissuading him from his cores. He'll stop at nothing when it comes to finding his ex-wife and child. I'm assuming more so child than ex-wife, but you know what? They're generally lumped together, but let's start this gameplay. Anytime you want to fish loading. There we go. For the past couple of weeks, you've been barricaded up in your home, trying to get a hold of your ex-wife Chloe over the phone. No one on the other end has ever picked up, though, and this has made you a little bit worried for both her and your son, Tom, over whom she has custody. Even though you and Chloe may not have parted on the best of terms two years ago, you still care about them, and want to make sure they're both safe in this post-apocalyptic nightmare. Storing as many supplies as you could realistically carry in your old car, which apparently is like five Lunchables, you drive over the state border towards their home. Soon enough, your vehicle runs out of fuel and grinds to a halt. Just before you ditch it, though, you have an interesting broadcast over the radio. Survivors in the secured city of Wellston, far to the east, claim to have a ship, which they plan to use to find sanctuary offshore. Never worked out for anybody in any zombie movie, but you know what? They're trying. If you can find Chloe and Tom, maybe, just maybe, you can take them there. So let's start our journey on foot, right? Okay, so here's pretty much everything here. We have a health meter, fatigue, uh, hunger, all of our ammo counts up here, be it pistol, shotgun, rifle. In this case, our food rations are here. Managing group is inventory management. What's equipped, what's not, what you have. When you're looting things, it'll be over there. But for now, let's just start going on the map. Okay, this is a good feature of the game. It's if, you've seen, if you're looking at this, you have seen this before, FTL, just pretty much waypoint things. There's two things I... Okay, there's one thing I love about it. I love that right away everything's interconnected. You just mouse over, you see what everything's linked to. It's nice having the visual. I can't tell you how many times I've been lazy, half-assing, rushing in FTL, and just kind of like clicked here, and I'm like, oh crap, I can't make that jump. So that's good. The downside is, I'm sorry, this is a spider web. It doesn't look too good. There's only three different sectors, but look how crazy these are, right? But I digress. Let's start. Let's start. So we're just going to click on this node here. A lot of waiting time. How far we are from our destination. The growl meter, when it gets closer to full, is our chance of finding zombies we're going to have to deal with. So it's definitely something we should be paying attention to. Reach our destination, though. As you take a moment to pause, you notice a backpack lying on the side of the road. There's nobody else around, so it's probably just been abandoned for some time now. I mean... I'll take some free stuff, though, right? A little bit sketchy, but what can we do? Let's go this way. As we can see, our fatigue and hunger meters are slowly filling. Almost reached destination two. Let's see. You're approached by an elderly man in a ragged-looking cloak. Behind him are four infected, but... They seem strangely docile. After long years of study, I've finally done it, he whispers. The dead walk thanks to my arcane rituals. 
The man seems to be completely mad, but given the infected behind him, maybe he's on to something. I'm not going to murder them right away. I haven't had this thing, so let's, let's keep talking. Let me keep talking. Oh, shit. The strange man babbles incoherently about grimoires and ancient ritual practices. All the while, the infected stand behind him as if no one edible were around. And now you shall join the ranks of my minions! The man shouts, suddenly throwing water balloons at you. They hit their mark, and the infected suddenly stumble towards you. Okay, so we're going to get to see some combat. Thankfully, there's only four. Of course, you have the pause mechanic. Space bar, pause, resume, pause, resume. When you In this case, with the pistol, we have three options. We can wait. Waiting does what you think. You're not taking an action. Don't want to do that right now. As far as aiming goes, we can aim at the body. There's a small chance just to go for the flat-out kill. In this case, as it says below, the 20%. Or we go for the aim at the upper body. 85% chance to get the head. Get the head, generally guaranteed kill. At the bottom of the screen, we're seeing the hit chance. As you can see, the closer they are, the better our chance are hitting. The farther, less good. But, you know, there's four zombies. We're going to just start pot-shotting them now. Let's see. Ah, we missed. Damn. Oh, again. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Change our target. One more. I believe. I believe... Well, okay, now we're going to show something because I don't want to deal with reloading. We have melee weapon, same thing. Damage, hit chance modifier, attack blight. We're going to equip that really quickly and start going to melee swing on this guy. Got one kill, so let's just try to orient ourselves a little bit, put a little bit of distance here. Go for a few swings. Up oh, when that little targeting reticle happens, you generally want to move away. I feel like you can kind of game it quite frequently just by baiting them in and out like that. I think in this case, we just got so many swings without him swinging back. Let's see. The elderly man ran off during the fight when it became clear you were winning. You sniffed the liquid that he threw at you and realized that it smells like soap. But why would he throw soap at you? Why didn't Infected want to eat him? Was it just because he's... It's either because A, he was dirty as all hell, or he, he smelled like something? But why weren't they attacking you to begin with? I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure what the overall cause of this zombie plague is. So let us see here. No sense wasting our food or rations yet. Let's go down this path. Head toward a little city marker we have on the map. Left, right, left, right. Ground meter slowly filling. Our fatigue's getting higher slowly. Just a couple of zombino. So I feel fine in just using our melee weapon. I know we have the 20 pistol bullets up here. Those will go by deceptively quick. Oh, move, don't get hit. There we go. That was riskier than it needed to be, but you know, why not? Miss. Hit. There we go, it's dead. Didn't take any damage. We're getting pretty fatigued, though. Let's see, oh, we got a rusty revolver, so it can do 8 damage. Has a clip size of 6. Some hit and attack delay. And I'm just going to go with the old revolver. I feel like that's more reliable. I'm going to pick it up just in case we run into a vendor or something, but... Let's see. And over here, our fatigue's getting... Yeah, it's getting pretty full. I think we'll try to sleep overnight time. So let's see if we can find... Get to this little location. Oh, Jesus Christ. Care for a little game. A man standing at you haste, at a hastily made table asks. There's quite a bit of food in it for you. He explains that he has a 22 revolver loaded with blanks and proposes to play Russian roulette with you. He insists on a wager of five rations. This might end our run very prematurely, but I really want to do it, because this is stupid as all hell. Sure. Who will play? Greg will play. Greg plays for a few rounds, and then BANG! The gun goes off, and the man falls over. That wasn't a blank. You quickly take what you can from him and leave. Alright, we got five rations, bunch of bullets, and another garbage revolver that we're not going to take. You know what? Go figure, that could have gone very poorly for us, but it worked. Somehow it worked, we didn't die a horrible death, and we're just going to keep on advancing. Meters are getting very full, but I don't like resting too early. Let's see. Z, 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 ooh. Eat a little bit of food, just so we don't have any food penalties going on, because the ground meter is just about to fill up. Just two zombies, so again, let's just go for the... 
Nah, we haven't been shooting much at all. Reload button's way up here. Kind of weird. Move reload. Take another sh We're going for body shots. That's not, that's not what we want. There we go. With one... No sense wasting our bullets. We already wasted more than I wanted. There we go. Smack and miss. Miss. Come on, Greg. There we go. Thanks, Greg. You do what you do, right? High risk zone. We're still going to sleep in it. Growls are kind of going crazy. Just bouncing up and down. And it's raining. Rain's pretty bad because it basically... Sorry, I'm just watching this meter and freaking out. Reduces how long or how quickly your fatigue goes down. So if you're sleeping during the rain, it's going to be ticking up pretty damn slow. Come on, let it be daytime. It's less scary in the day. Come on. Come on. There we go. We're feeling pretty damn good. We're going to keep traveling. Meter's on the cusp of filling. We got a little UI bug, but you know what? You come across two men pointing pistols at each other. Where is it, you thief? It's mine now, so drop your gun before I add another hole to your body. I'm not gonna interfere. I no, it's no, mm, mm, no. You do, you do. Oh Jesus! You decide to avoid the two men. A few minutes later, you hear gunshot in the distance, followed by the cries of a little girl. Daddy, no! A few seconds later, you hear a second. Oh shit! That's a little bit dark. Um, a little bit of a UI bug. I'm hoping that fixes it. There we go. So um. Yeah, I feel a little bit a little bit bad about that one there. A little side path, get to the city. Didn't realize that this one didn't connect to it, but that's not a big deal. We're not really concerned about food rations or anything, so. Oh jeez. As you walk along, you see a man and a woman, each struggling with infected that have grappled them. They're moving around too much to aim reliably, and you only have time to save one of them if you use melee. I'm not gonna use melee, I'm gonna shoot them. I'm gonna try to save them both, right? With two resounding cracks, you down one of the infected, but accidentally hit the woman in the head. The man falls to his knees before taking out a knife and slit- Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, that wasn't worth the ammo then. They're, they're not holding back any punches. This game is dark as all hell, alright? Oh, we're getting hungry. Let's quickly have a snack. Keep traveling. We're almost to the city. This is where the... We're in Mil Miltonsburg. Same thing. You find a lot of supplies. You can search different locations throughout, but they all come with risks. Let's just go with the police station. Search for 20. About a 1 in 4 chance of us getting caught. 40. 50-50. Slightly in our odds. I feel like we go for the coin flip here. It's a slightly favorable coin flip that we're going to lose. Shit. Okay, so there's a lot of zombies here, so we are going to whip out our old revolver. Reload it really quickly. Get the headshots ready. And start hoping our accuracy is good. One down. Two down. Three. Come on, four. Give me the fourth one. Awesome. Relocate, manage group. Switch to our hammer. I wish there was a way to do that quicker, but that's just a personal opinion there. Come on, just keep clobbering them. There we go. Not ideal, but oh, we got shotgun shells, which will be good. We can vendor them, do something with them, but they don't really help us help us out with our pistol. I'm gonna equip our pistol really quick though, and make sure it's fully reloaded. There we go. Has six rounds in it, so let's see. We can hit up the hospital for some medical supplies. Oh yeah, the percent percentages will always be changing. So 20 minutes, 10 percent chance. That is not a big deal. You that's pretty much the best you're gonna get but 31% chance is low enough I'm feeling like we go for it god damn it okay same thing aim for the upper body we're burning through our shells it's uh, not too good there we go the odds are in our favor with each shot Okay, two of them, one's weakened as all hell, so I feel like this won't be an issue. We're going to try to sprint on past. I'm going to try to see if I can target them. Yeah, you can target them with the mini on the top right. 
everything, get below it a little bit and just start swinging. Not ideal. There we go. They're dead. And oh man. Oh boy, we got a blanket. I don't know if that helps us at all, but for now we're going to pass on it. Try scavenging again, grocery store. Can't hurt us to go for more supplies. 36% chance we're bound to have one of these pan out properly for us, right? Hey, we did it without getting caught. Couple rations, not great, but there's worse we could have pulled from there. Apartments might be an alright chance. Again, another close to coin flip in our fl favor, but will it work? Hey. Oh, Jesus, more duct tape. That's pretty shit. Okay, our fatigue level is getting pretty high. Let's see what we're doing in the drugstore. You know what, I say we go in the disadvantage here. Let's see how that turns out for us. We're gonna have another fight. Oh, we're not, oh man. That's good, we're dumping uh, duct tape in that. We're definitely gonna go for double bandage. Healing items are not as common as I would like. So, it looks like everywhere has been cleared out. So it looks like it's in our best interest to maybe have a nap. Got to search for a safe place to rest in the city. So basically you're camping out in the house. Thankfully, because you actually go out and find the safe spot, you don't have to deal with the growl meter filling up while you're sleeping. So it definitely has that going for you. But let's see, it is coming up on midnight, which isn't ideal because it might be one, maybe two in the morning before we are fully rested and good to go. So, um, yeah, screw you. Let's go to Chloe's apartment. And the way it's been panning out, I feel like we're playing this character as no holding back. If things are going wrong, we're dealing with it. But you arrive outside your ex's apartment, carefully entering the front lobby through the shattered glass front door. Keep an eye out for infected as you make your way to the third floor. To your dismay, you find fresh blood sprayed across the walls in a macabre display, matching the corded smell and mix of human and rotter corpses throughout the building. This place must have fallen recently, making you fear the worst for your ex-wife and kid. You sneak over to the door of Chloe's apartment and listen carefully. You're alarmed to hear pottery smashing to the ground. Someone inside must be looting the place, or maybe it's some infected that got stuck inside. You're not sure, but it's cause for concern. Be ready your weapons, just in case. Diplomatic? Ah, oh, do I not have my weapon equipped? Why can't I shoot him? Why can't I shoot? As quietly as you possibly can, you slowly open the apartment door and creep inside. It's difficult to see, with the light seemingly shot out, peeking around the corner into the large living room. You see a lone figure tearing the place apart, tossing aside piles of clothing and junk, trying to find something of value. This figure, short, sniveling man, has a shotgun slung over his shoulder and seems incredibly agitated. You watch him for a moment and notice him shaking and making strange noises every time he lays a finger on something. I have bullets. I just don't think I reloaded. Okay, try the diplomatic approach. That's our only option, I guess. I don't want to give him my flashlight. Oh no, I gotta see what's happening. You call out to the man from across the room, maintaining a safe distance. The stranger whips around on the spot, pulling the shotgun off his shoulder and shaking aimly at your stomach. I was here first! Get out! This is my spot! After that, the man starts shouting incoherently. This is looking sketchier by the minute. Okay, here's the thing. When you think FTL, you always think in the FTL, I think it was light blue. Light blue was a great choice. In this case, it looks like it's green. We can offer him the flashlight if he calms down and lets me look for my kid. The flashlight is very useful. Um, at nighttime, if you're fighting zombies, you generally have a large aim penalty. Go figure, flashlight reduces that, so. I'm just looking for my kid, dude. You try to talk the man down, but clearly he doesn't want to listen to you. I told you, it's my spot. You want to take my stuff, don't you? I'll shoot you if you step forward. Well, I gotta step forward. Shit. Take a step forward, and the man, true to his word, immediately pulls the trigger. With a thunderous bang, the weapon goes off. The man's aim is off, but your leg is still peppered with pellets, making you collapse to the ground in agony. Knowing too well this noise might attract infected, he curses, pushes you aside, and makes a rapid escape from the building. You search the bedroom to find a corpse laid out on your former bed, its face disfigured by... Oh, no. There's no mistaking that short, dark, blonde hair. Those highlights. Poor Chloe. You're gonna find whoever murdered your ex-wife and COMPLETELY DESTROY THEM! 
Uh, that seems a little much, but you know, probably zombies. Enraged, you walk out of the room. There's no signs of Tom, but by searching the apartment further, you find a note scribbled on a torn shred of paper signed by Zach, your ex's bastard of a boyfriend. Yeah, I know, piece of shit, Tom. Warren, as always, you're late. Taking off out of this crazy place and going to my cabin. You know the place. I'm stuck with this stupid kid right now, but I figure we can use him to sneak into places and steal shit. If he dies, he dies. Anyways, don't waste time. You know where to find me. Zach. You have mixed feelings about the situation. Well, you're glad Tom wasn't left to die with his mom. It's clear that Zach's a piece of shit. You know all about the cabin Zach is talking about, considering it used to be yours before it was taken in the divorce. You remember Tom complaining about how dirty it was when he was taken there by his mother last summer. The fact that Zack isn't caring for the place pisses you off. Yeah, let's go to our cabin. It's in zone 3. But I mean, that's that shitty. I mean, we're going to eat really quickly. Mom. We're at, uh, let's see. 7 out of 10 health. Didn't want to use this already, but we have bandages, so that'll bump us up to 9. Let's see if we can get at least part way through the zone. Actually, on that lovely little story beat, we're going to call it. Not sure how long this series will be. I can say I'm really enjoying the game. Hopefully, I actually have a successful run or a run that gets me past Sector 2. As soon Over here, you have different spots for party members, but, you know, it gets hard, and I'm bad. But, again, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. If you want to see more, let me know. I'm always interested in different games. Leave me some feedback. But for now, I'm Dr. Rhett, and I'll catch you all tomorrow. See you later, everybody.